So you've heard pretty cool things about Darktable and you've decided to try it out. You load your first capture and... Wait, what? The sky is pink, the sea is pink, Darktable is rubbish. The sun is clearly yellow as displayed in this 2D graph. So why is Darktable turning the sun pink and what can we do to fix it? The most common culprit of pink areas in your capture is... Highlight clipping at the sensor. This is what happens when you have too much fun in the sun. Part of the data you captured hit the ceiling of the sensor's upper limit and the sensor said, yep, I'm full. Write maximum values in all these areas. When we load a camera native data file, also known as raw into Darktable, we apply certain processes so we can visualize the data captured. I'm going to try and investigate why the highlights turn pink, so bear with me, or skip to the chapter in the video where I attempt to fix the pink highlights. Let's say that this is our capture with a bit of overexposure. I will disable all modules that I can disable, so we can see what's happening step by step. I'm also going to skip demosaicing, as this throws us off a little bit. And I'm going to set the raw black and white point to pass through. Now we can work this process from the bottom up. At this point, we're pretty much visualizing the data values in our raw file. If we zoom in to a stupid percentage, we can see the photoside pattern. Each photoside contains a single numeric value. Right now, if we look at the raw black white point module, we can see that the largest photoside value. 65535 five, gets a white square and the lowest value, 0, gets a black square. Our squares at this point are a certain shade of grey, because we are not using the whole range between 0 and 65535. Five, the camera that I shot with can only write 14-bit data files, which means the maximum value is 16383. If I drag the slider back to the manufacturer recommended value of 16300, you will notice that we're simply marking where our useful data ends and where it begins. If I reset this module, the values will change depending on the camera they came from. Now we're going to take a step that is going to be a bit confusing. Because we know the bare filter pattern of our sensor, we can give these values an arbitrary color. I would give them different colors other than green, red and blue, but I don't have a choice at this point, so here it is. Remember, we cannot deduce color information from a single value. This is just a visualization, a colorful chart if you will. You will notice that every second square is green. This is the Bayer pattern of the sensor. It is called the CFA, Color Filtration Array. The most common one is red, green, green, blue. Why there are more green squares than red and blue? Bryce Bear's patented pattern included an additional green filter per every red, green and blue filter to mimic the physiology of the human eye, which uses M and L cones to perceive luminance. They are most sensitive to green light. So how do we get something useful out of these squares? Well, first we need to debayer which is synonymous to demosaicing. We have quite a few algorithms to choose from. That, in a nutshell, take information from adjacent squares and approximate a value. So instead of one value per square, we want to have three values per square. Three is the magic number here, as coincidentally, we will end up with three channels that make an image, red, green, and blue, also known as RGB. But right now, we're still in large number land. Now let's demosaic. We will use a debayering algorithm, but will not account for the fact that we have more green squares than red and blue squares. We just want to get three values per square instead of one value each. I'll select RCD for demosaicing because it's the default. And here it is. It's as if we averaged all the squares in a fancy way to get a smooth visualization of the data in the raw file. The only thing that is missing now is to take into account that we have more green squares than red and blue squares. We need to scale the three values accordingly. 
I'm going to do this manually for maximum effects and that aha moment, but it's best to keep this module at D65. Notice how everything appears to be green, except for the sun and the clouds. They look white. Keep that in mind. Now watch what happens when I move the tint slider and make the preview less green and more pink. As I move the tint slider towards pink, the visually green areas move towards white. The visually white areas move towards pink. Since this operation is still simply mathematical and is not performed in a color space or constrained by a display, we are able to get values above 1 or 255 because we perform these operations non-destructively. Later on in the pipeline, we take these values and usher them into a gamut, finally giving them tristimulus meaning. In simpler terms, we are finally in RGB land and our values begin to hold meaning. Technically, it happened a bit earlier since I'm not able to turn the module off. You can imagine that up to the input color profile module, everything is black and white, values that we haven't applied any meaning to. Nice, we manually produced the pink highlights and now we know that it's not a result of something being broken, but a result of being non-destructive. That's it. Let me reset the unfortunately called white balance module in its default and let me enable the color calibration module as well. Right, it's time to do something about that pink sky. Let's first assume our default filmic RGB workflow. I will move to reconstruction tab as I will need to reconstruct the areas that were clipped at the sensor. I will enable the mask preview as it is important to select the area we're working on. Right now it's black because nothing is selected. I'll walk the threshold slider back until I see the overexposed areas turn white. I will adjust the transition so I can almost see the rest of the objects in the picture. Now for the reconstruction bit. I've already went over these sliders and what they do in other two videos that I will link in the description. Right now, I will gloss over their function as I search for the best result. We can turn the mask off. For the first slider, let's keep the reconstruction technique in the middle between structure and texture. The second slider, I will attempt to reconstruct instead of bloom first because I feel there is enough detail for some reconstruction there in the highlights. And as always, I will go full gray on the last slider. Our color information is mangled due to clipping, and I'm not going to bother preserving something I don't care about. Full gray. Okay, we still have the pink sky and the pink sea. That means that our threshold is too high. I will walk that back slightly until it's completely gone. Okay, it looks better, but I can feel it looks a bit harsh still. Let's try to favor more bloom instead of reconstructing. There we go. Nice and smooth. We can even increase the white relative exposure a little bit, which will likely bring back a bit of pink highlights. But we can fix that once again by adjusting the threshold. There we go, problem fixed. Often there are times where we don't want to use filmic RGB. For example, exporting EXRs to use with other software. If we turn off filmic, color balance RGB, color calibration, we end up with pink highlights again. But worry not, because we have a highlight reconstruction module. Let's turn that on and I will clear the search term. Now we have the most basic of methods enabled which is called clip highlights. After we have scaled our photo size values and if any value exceeded our threshold it will be clipped. Simple as that. This will result in a flat pancake with hue shifts everywhere. It also pretty much matches the areas that were clipped at the center. We can preview that with this little sensor clipping preview button. 
we reduce the exposure later on in the pipeline, we will see that it has no effect on the clipped area. It just gets darker. The next, a more intelligent option is to reconstruct in LCH. It will attempt to recover some information from the remaining unclipped channels. It is a much better option in my opinion. Even though the reconstructed highlight contains no color information, we can recover data that we can work with. If I reduce the exposure now, you will see that we managed to recover some detail. I prefer this setting for my EXR exports when I need them. The penultimate one is reconstruct color, which gives a similar result to reconstruct in LCH, but gains the values based on surrounding areas. You get some notion of color back, but the results aren't always um, stable. And the last one is guided Laplacians. It is the most resource intensive, but in theory it should produce the best results. However, it should be reserved to cases where you don't have large areas that were clipped at the sensor. Otherwise, it's not very effective. Okay, that's all the material I've prepared for you today. I hope you found this useful and hopefully you've learned something new today. So see you soon. Bye.